What is up, guys? Space Mike here. I'm going to teach you guys about vanity. I'm just going to jump right back in with Phoenix Journal number 27. Here we go. Vanity, then, is the, the preoccupation with admiring, changing, or altering and displaying one's physical appearance image or form because the vain one feels unworthy or inferior within and often hides behind an ostentatious pretentious excessive exhibition Phoenix Journal 27, continue. With all the attention given from childhood on only to physical appearance, the spirit within shrivels and pines for allowance and acceptance and freedom. This because the anti-God, which they have now allowed within, slowly crushes and all but destroys the beauty and divineness within, which is the spirit of life of God perfection. Very rare it is indeed this day and time, that ones who have become firmly trapped in the vanity game of the adversary are able to recognize their fully, that their folly, and thus seek to release this false unworthiness and limitation brought about by the superficial preoccupation of physical image. You must accept self regardless of physical form. If you recognize that you wear too much weight upon your frame, and it is not healthy for you, then you must decide to change of it and then do it. Until then, need you love yourself, God within, less because you look or don't look a certain way? No. Commune with your spirit within and find out why you consume more than you are able to use. Learn to understand why you do something, and then you can work for positive adjustment within. Your physical health represents your inner health. Disease of the body is the physical manifestation of what began as dis-ease in the mind. Clean up your thoughts and your body will be healthy and vibrant as well. It is really so simple, but most of you miss it. You need not miss it anymore now, right? We'd also like to speak a bit about what is termed cosmetic surgery, butchery. Your own statistics show that many women feel less feminine or less attractive if they have small breasts. Why does this happen? Because the images of bigger breasts and voluptuous women are thrust before them beginning when they are children in nearly all of the controlled media. These young girls, women, feel if they had bigger breasts that somehow they will be more acceptable to men and thus also be envied by women. New ones often, on the one hand, do not wish to be considered sex objects, yet you desire to fit what you are taught, programmed, as the sexually, physically attractive female figure. Don't you see, beloved ones, you would allow doctors to cut upon your bodies and cause you pain and suffering, and often later complications, just to fit an acceptable to you physical image? Again, mankind adversary has corrupted the purity of the woman's breasts by making them into hideous sexual objects of lustful desire. The beautiful grace of the feminine body, which was created in, perf in beautiful perfection of God, has been cut into pieces, breasts, vagina, mouth, neck, legs, buttocks, etc., of physical lustful desire. Do you know why the breasts were given to a woman? Not as sexual objects, but for the suckling and nurturing of her babe. A new, a new creature of God. Remember this, women, the next time you think to make yourself bigger breasts, you dishonor God within. By despising your given physical form and wishing to cut it up to make it into some image of what is appealing. To who? Why do you allow imposed images of perfection thrust down your throat? The answer, precious ones, is you must not allow others' opinions and images to make you feel self-unworthy. Here is a test for you, women. Upon awakening in the morning next, 
Go to your full-length vanity mirror and look upon yourself naked. What do you see? Can you look within the vanity mirror without your makeup and hairdo, your girdles and padded brassieres and fine garments, and see God? If not, then recognize and understand your transgression, commune with God within, forgive self, and do not look again into the mirror until you do see and know the love and beauty of God reflected back. And the same goes for you ones who are of male form of human. You experience vanity somewhat differently than women, but most of you still suffer feelings of inferior unworthiness when you gaze upon your nude body and face. We have seen you. God has listened to you. The dialogue within goes something like this. If only I was taller, I had bigger shoulders, larger penis, hair upon my chest and or face, had a flatter stomach, a thinner frame, more muscles, more hair, blue eyes, brown eyes, whiter teeth, tan skin, light skin, and, and, I would be accepted. Then the dialogue goes something like this. If only I had more money, a new car, a better job position, and, and, I would be accepted. Do you recognize anyone here, you of the male species? Do you see, precious ones? You set yourself up. By believing the live images to always fail in some way or another, accept yourself within, honor your physical body which has been loaned to you, for this is the wondrous, beautiful vehicle given of the Father for your spirit within of God to experience the wonders of creative spiritual unfoldment upon third dimensional physical illusion. Now, within your Western civilization, nearly every little girl and boy wants to look like someone else they have seen in a movie, on the street, or in an advertisement. They are taught through the program, media, and advertising not to accept themselves as a beautiful individual reflection of God because their physical features, they are told, do not measure up to the ideal presented of what is acceptable beauty. It is no wonder that the cosmetic and related industries make billions of dollars off of you ones because they, the anti-God, create the images, and feed the vanity which is the result of one's feeling they never quite measure up and will thus seek to improve what is now their perceptions of physical imperfection. Even many of you ones your society defines as beautiful, while they are young, are most often cast aside when they begin to show signs of aging. And those who depend only upon their looks while they are young will find themselves frightened of aging and will thus become empty inside and bitter because of the rejection by the very ones who molded and accepted them while they were physically young in appearance. What can you do, parents, to help positively guide your child toward the path of inner beauty and spiritual freedom and away from societal-imposed limitations of acceptance? You must encourage the child first to understand his, her oneness with all, God, Aten, other humans, the planet, the mineral, plant, and animal kingdoms, other planets, all of life, and all of creation. Teach the child about God and his love for all of his fragments of self. Teach the child about the natural laws of balance given forth to maintain order upon the creation and within creation. Teach the child about the nature of God's gift of free will and the personal responsibility each one has to honor God within and serve only His will because He is our just and wise spiritual creator, ruler, and king of wisdom. Teach them about the adversary and how it has fooled many of God's children. Teach the child that what they may perceive as separation is only illusion of separation, and that many other ones they will meet will not understand this truth because they are spiritually ignorant and duped by the adversary of godness, and so then not yet spiritually aware. Teach the child to honor and be tolerant of all other human fragments as fragments of the one self of God and the creation. And yet, teach the child that he, she must also recognize and not tolerate the behavior, ignorant, prejudiced opinions, misperceptions, and actions which blatantly break the laws of balance of God and creation. So teach the child he must defend self 
within honor of God's laws, if one of these ignorant, spiritually weak ones wishes to cause harm in thought, word, or deed to him or another. Teach the child about his power to co-create with God and why he must monitor his thoughts, words, and deeds in order to recognize his transgressions so that he can create a godly world in service to God's will. Then you must teach the child to always see, develop, and honor the spiritual and loving beauty within self and all others, which is the birthright of all of God's children. Teach the child the truth that spiritual oneness, beauty, power, wisdom, and love within can never age or die or be taken away from anyone because the spirit is what is real. It is the spirit of life that exists within all of the creation in the continual unfolding blossom of joy and love. And so, you beloved parents of God, must also then live in accordance to the laws and will of God which you have then taught the child, to set God Otten's example of balance and truth with the child which the child will surely follow. So when you have done your duty for God Otten as parent, and have given to the best of your understanding and awareness, the child, the love and discipline of God's will and the laws of balance, and you yourself too, have set the example by your actions and behavior, then you must release the child to God that he may choose with his own free will his experiences and learn about his personal responsibility in the manifestation of life. It is wrong, oh, is it wrong to want, oh, hold one moment. <laughs> <clears throat> is it wrong to want to look your best? Not at all. You must simply and honestly understand what truly motivates you. To be neat and clean in your dress and appearance gives honor to self and God, as long as you don't secretly despise and are not ashamed of your appearance and seek to alter it or hide its reflection of beauty. If you are acceptable and give honor to self as you are in physical form, whether it be male, female, black, white, tall, petite, red hair, gray hair, you will all, ex you will be acceptable and give honor to God Aten. All others, they are individual reflections of God Aten as well. Whatever their limited human prejudices and opinions are matters, it matters not and at all to you. Remember, in the big picture, you are not your physical body. You are God's fragment occupying physical manifested form of your choosing to allow experience upon this wondrous creation. All are beauteous creatures of God Aten. Each is different. Isn't that wonderful? God, too, enjoys variety of his creatures within the creation. Why think you there be so many types of forms on just your tiny planet? Do you not enjoy the varieties and uniqueness of all the creatures and creations within this creation, such as of each type of flower, each color of the rainbow, each season of climate, each insect, each animal, and each being? Are we saying that it's wrong to wear your makeup and have your stylish hairdos and wear upon your body's fine and beauteous garments? Not at all. You simply must recognize why you do these things. If you love who and what you are within with, and without in your nakedness, then enjoy playing your games of makeup and dress up because you enjoy it. It is fun. You can afford to, and it gives you happiness to do so, not because you despise your body and countenance for its perceived imperfections or because you wish to impress others as to the finery of your jewels and garments that somehow you are finer to. For example, you once have designer everything now, such as cars, furniture, appliances, clothing, cosmetics. Well, some designers have generated more prestige and admiration than others. Do you know many simply copy other designs? And then many of your more celebrated and prestigious designers use the creative designs of their apprentices? Yes, and they, are, they place their own name upon the garment. A bit of stealing, we would say. What is the point? If it is a garment, enjoy the beauty, fine quality, and fit of the garment. 
because you enjoy the garment, not because you want the prestige and snobbery, not to mention vanity of the designer label to be noticed by and somehow make you better than or socially accepted by others. Do you see the difference we are pointing out, dear ones? You blindly run about seeking approval from anyone but yourselves. We simply want you to recognize your folly in the things you do and desire and correct of it for you and for God Otten, your father within you. Free yourselves from the bondage of vanity and you will be one large step closer to reaching God's kingdom. Are we saying it is wrong to return color to the gray hair upon your heads and to otherwise cosmetically hide from view what you consider signs of aging? Not necessarily wrong, just simply fact that you create but are unable to accept certain changes of body deterioration, and most uh, all of you ones are horrified of aging or being old in your physical form. Why? Because you have been taught again by the adversary that somehow you are less human and less attractive when you are old and you will be rejected and often are as unable to contribute to humanity. Do you know, dear Chelas, that it is that very fear planted by Satan in your minds which starts the clock of aging ticking within your very being? You ones, by believing you will live only up to a hundred years or so, begin your own aging process within you when you are small children. And because of the now created by the adversary through you ones, harshness, pollution, and poisons upon your plane, you really have no desire within to stay any longer. So your body starts its deterioration process. Why are some more vibrant and healthy than others throughout their lifetime? The ones who are vibrant and healthy are in love with life and honor their spirit of life within. Their bodies simply age because they too perceive limit of lifespan from early indoctrination. Only they age perhaps with more dignity and grace because of the degree of spiritual purity of joy and love which they have now recognized and cultivated within themselves and have given graciously to others. Do you know that you could create a body which would live for a nearly endless number of years in your counting, if you but knew it inside your mind to be true? Our brothers of the physical form upon Pleiades live more than some thousand years in your counting in their physical form. At one time in your ancient civilizations of Atlantis and Mu, Lemuria, your ancestors also lived to be over a thousand years of age in your counting. Remember, your immortal soul never ages, Chelas. Most physical manifested bodies, though eventually deteriorate, not, only, not always because of fear, but often because one simply tire and become bored with having the same form. So they create deterioration of the form and move on to new realms and forms within the creation. In the higher realms of God's kingdom, your form becomes high concentration of cellular light and, with, and you can change it at will since it is one with your spirit within. It has often been said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So behold, through the eyes of God Otten, the beauty of all of the glorious, wondrous varieties of creatures and creations within the creation only the anti-God or adversary through cancerous prideful narcissism seeks to bring illusion of ugliness and define, limit, and confine what is beauteous and so as to impose upon you boundaries of separation from Father, Mother, Otten, and the creation. The adversary cannot do this if you do not allow it to, to dishonor yourself by buying its lie of standard beauty. So in closing on vanity, we will share a form of vanity which is most interesting and somewhat humorous to us. We observe many ones who even choose their pets in accordance to acceptable beauty standards set by the adversary. For example, ones often choose the breed of cat such as Persian or Himalayan not because they love the animal 
but because they desire the expensive societally defined beauty to match their carpet and or their self-imposed image of themselves, which they wish to project upon their admiring friends and associates. Ah, well, it shows just to what ends you ones will go in your desire to give the impression you are something other than who you are. 12. Prejudice First, we will define prejudice to prejudge, a judgment or opinion formed before the facts are known, especially an unfavorable, irrational opinion. 2. Hatred or dislike for a particular group, race, religion, etc. 3. Injury or damage to a person arising from hasty and unfair judgment by others. Now, one who is prejudiced is usually also referred to as a bigot, defined as an intolerant, prejudiced person. So one who is prejudiced pronounces judgment based solely on their own opinion, which has very little or no basis in truth or fact. For example, in your current society, when Otten within the Phoenix journals brings up and exposes the truth about what are the protocols of Zion, what the true motivation of the ones behind Zionism, how the term Jew was created and is henceforth revealed as a misnomer or incorrect made-up word, he and the publishers are called anti-Semitic. Well, this word anti-Semitic is also used by the ones who are not Judean, but come from the Nordic and Mongol tribes of Russia, who were then called Khazars, who adopted Judaism as their religion to allow shield from identity and thus cause confusion and dissension to further their own anti-Semitic, anti-life, anti-Christ means. The word, as you've learned in previous Phoenix journals, Semite, comes from the lineage of one of the sons of the one called Noah. His name was Sem, Shem, whose ancestor was Adam, the father of the white human race, who was conceived by union of the heavenly son and guardian angel, Sem Jessa, and an earth woman, Sem, Shem. And his line wherefrom came Joseph, earth father to Emmanuel, were seated of holy God from his celestial sons. So to call one an anti-Semite does not mean anti-Jew or anti-other races. It means anti-God. Yet you ones, including the truly godly Judeans, have been programmed by opinion molders created by the evil ones of Satan, who now call themselves Zionist Jews, to falsely believe that those who openly expose and oppose the anti-God activities of Zionism, their agencies, such as the ADL, the Mossad, and the State of Israel are anti-Semites, and therefore to be silenced. Clever indeed have been the ones who wish only to destroy Godness and control your world. So you see, dear ones, if you believe the lies of the opinion molders, you too are then prejudiced, and by your ignorance you become a tool of evil and allow destruction of self and others who follow you willingly down the road to hell. You heard it said, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Make sure your good intentions are God's intentions, backed by truth and knowledge, not by opinions designed to allow you to hang yourself. The evil ones are possessed by irrational prejudgment, hatred, and dislike for others, which makes them intolerant or bigoted towards those who oppose their self-will opinions of how things are or should be. As was discussed under the first deadly sin of pride, if one possessed of evil first cannot seduce others into believing what is their destructive and manipulative false view of things, they will then desire and seek to destroy the ones of goodness and integrity because of their, the evil ones, own intolerant, bigoted will. Now we would like to give clarification unto one struggling to understand the meaning of Otten's statement of truth. There are no victims, there are only volunteers. 